like i think the highlight of this episode is my mom hey guys what's up welcome back to my channel good evening guys wherever you are my name is joy and this is my leia welcome to joy's leia for those that are new thank you so much for stopping by and then for those that are not new to this channel thank you for always supporting me anyways um so in today's video today's video is going to be a very interesting one it might be long i don't know but it's going to be a very interesting one and in today's video i'm going to be talking about um what it's like to grow up in a nigerian home so this is like something that i feel like almost every nigerian if you're not if you are nigerian almost every nigerian if not all nigerians experience but you know there's some a tiny percentage that don't go through the things that we go through people like pamela mm -hmm. not like like there's something that we can always relate to but some things that are crucial and that you know she escaped from but anyways i'm going to be talking about my personal experience in as growing up as a girl child to be specific girl child in a nigerian home and then i have my book here with me and there are some questions at some point i just wrote down and then i'll read our answer so i know that would be more for somebody else but you're stuck with me yeah and i'm sure you guys have seen my face yes i know i'm looking pretty today not every day though so like enjoy it while you can anyway so with all that being said let's get right into this video i don't want this video to be very long i know that you guys are used to my long videos but this one is going to be very short by god's grace so before i say too much things please guys don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to drop a comment guys please keep the comment section rolling let's talk you know let's tell me if your experiences are the same with mine <laughs> And then um, tell me what you think of the video of what Nigerian parents do. And then also don't forget to share this video with your friends. Don't forget to hit the notification button. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. We are 200 and something guys. 203 I think. Guys, let's, let's, you know, let's keep growing this. Help me get to my target 500 before this month ends. But anyways, no pressure, no pressure. So with that being said, let's get right into this video. So the first question I would like to say point here is where your parents treat. <laughs> okay, so the answer for me is yes. I would say my parents were strict, but my mom, my mom, Mama York, was stricter than the strictest. My mom was like very see. I don't think I've seen any parents that like matched that is up to that is as strict as the way my mom was. No, none of my friends' moms or mothers were as strict as my mom. My mom was very, very, very strict. Like there's something that we wouldn't do that my, that my dad will not like put too much will not reason too much by mommy. My mommy. If my mom hear of it, okay. So my my parents were actually very strict and my mom was just like i think the highlight of this episode is my mom because like everything that happened to us when we we're kids until now is my mom so the second one how did you guys like share chores like in my house everybody when we we're younger sha everybody used to do work home whether it's cooking or cleaning plates or washing dishes everybody my elder brother but you know now now you know he's big boy then all the, the servant girls, all the servant girls that are doing the work now. Him, he's you no know, dear, we, we are here, so I don't want to do the work now. But when we were younger, I, but there was this, I don't know if you guys did this in your house, but there was this thing we did in my house where on your birthdays you don't do work. Like, you're like the queen or the king of that day, you know, you're just like, please, it's my birthday. So, like, just use that day anyhow you want to use it because you'll be pardoned because your birthday. But I think when we got around maybe that 10 or when I got to I think 10 years or 8 years I wonder about the same papa or you do that work they won't beat you on that day so, <laughs> so um the third one were you guys allowed to go out? I'm sure everybody can say okay not everybody what I see on the internet these days it's not everybody that is like me some people lived like princes and princesses in my house my life was a triangle or maybe was a square from house to school to church to market 
back to my house that was my life it got to a point where i was even used to the fact that like we we are like i'm always at home like like the, like when we like grew older sometimes I, my, when my mom goes to work and goes to the market and my dad goes to work and then my sister would be like she wants to go out be like can you just stay at my bed what are we going there to do what are we going there to do like that's how it became a part of me that i don't want to go out because i, I always be like what are we going to do? because that's what my mom always asks us you're going there what do you want to go and talk about what do you want to go and do there so if someone tells me come like come back to my family like, what are we talking about because i'm so used to my mom telling us what are you going there to do like it's now a part of me like right now if it's like we are very chill i will be like you've not visited me in my head i'll be like what are we talking about what are we doing no matter how close we are i'm always like i always feel like it would be awkward so, like right now i don't even go out anymore so no we are not allowed to go out it's church market house school and i even loved going to church because church was the only escape for us like if you're not going to church maybe all this church program where you go to another state or another part in the in particular court those ones eh those ones are the ones so church was our escape literally which is is not supposed to be but it was it's what it is i mean it is what it is so the fourth one what was your worst what was the worst punishment given to you or you've ever received the worst punishment i've received guy i don't know a lot there is my mom used to do but even when we were young guy like it's been so long i won't forget about that thing self where you know canter i don't know what they call it but that bottle you know those glass bottles those canter bottles that have those sharp edges and hey you will need on it that is my mom you own then punishment or more they don't have to punish us in our house so it's beats like straight up beating like if you misbehave slap my mommy slippers spot cover turn his stick my oh more not like a punishment though oh the one my mom used to give us as punishment is you not eat for the whole day yes like i don't know my friends are always surprised when i say that you not eat for the whole day They'll be like eh. i'm like you guys don't do that because in my house you will not eat like till she come back you will not eat and you must cook before she come back you must cook but you will not eat and what else again? Oh my, it's beating, oh. Now beating end up. My mom don't have strength for punishment. It's beat. Oh, that thing, yeah. I. Oh God, oh God. You know, <laughs> you know when you don't do your housework, you don't do your chores. My mommy come back. She have shout, shout, shout. She have beat you. Everybody think you have rest. No, it have no, it have not finished like that. When you now go to sleep in the night, around twelve midnight or 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. I'm going to wake you that you should go and clean the house and that cleaning it's to be as if you are moving into the house immediately because you remove all the you know those old books that they used to keep we have all those old documents all those under the fridge that's what you do that night my mommy that's her punishment my mommy punishment is it's to torment your soul like you run mad so you really she punishes is beating straight up if she's not beating you then she lock up your matter if not you not eat or and that midnight clean up mm-hmm, finish if not i don't all those kneel down for one hour and you don't raise your hand or pick pin not to my house so they'll beat you die um did they beat did they beat you see i grew up with beats but no matter how much they beat me i'm not used to it like if you touch me i will cry I would both cry in school i would cry like <sighs> they beat us Mm-mm. they beat us i think the person that had it worse in my <laughs> is my sister my sister had it worse like <sighs> that girl should have sued those people because they beat her my elder sister they beat sasha and the fact that sometimes i was the cause of her beating <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this will beat us. That time, you know, like there was this time when we were in school, when we were, like we were talking about this in our classmates, and one of my classmates was like, that if his dad wants to beat me, you know, you will kneel down, you stretch your hand, like, yes, you're in class. I'm like, what's that? Is that beating? That you complain about? You don't know anything. Wait, wait, shut, shut up. You don't know anything. <laughs> in my house, my mom wants to beat you. My mom only the first thing her, her eye land on. The first thing, literally, if you spot cover, 
if it's her shoe when when she go out for markets it's her shoe first she first told you her shoe if she buy a new broom she'll use the broom and flog you know that new broom now to now wrap your whole body that's the word so my mommy broom oh slipper so anything any her hand oh or she'll pinch you or she'll buy hey. my mommy beat us no she beat us she beat us. Then my daddy own. My daddy is brutal. My daddy is brutal. If my daddy slap you, like my daddy will walk, like if you want to be slap you, eh? this guy that when someone is walking you, now be going back. Eh? Hey, when you're not close to the wall, ah, your head must touch that way. My daddy slap you. Ha! Ah, they beat us. And then if my daddy wants to like beat you, correct beat him. You know this. This pole in Nigeria, where this is a, that like the connect wire from post to your house, that ash wire, eh, hey, that's one that I used to use because we have one extra coil that is, that is in our front yard. So he cut a bit of it and then he twists it so it's hard all over your body. There's nothing like open your hand. I might want to beat you who who will carry it to his room, who will lock the room door, who will lock the front door, who will, who will lock the back door. So there's no exit, you're not running anywhere. They will beat you. Huh? They will beat you. And then my mom, there was a time when my mom was buying this. I don't know if you guys know this water cane. I used in class in school to flog people in here with a cane. She used to buy the bond to we'll break, we we'll burn, she will burn that one. Ah no, they beat us. They beat us. Then um did you ever call the police? <laughs> If a person about children that can answer this question, did you ever call the police for your parents? At least my mom that will call police for you. My mom. And I don't think that's a thing in Nigeria where you can even call police for your parents. Are you even mad, Steph? I don't know. Non Nigerians, please answer this question. Have you ever called the cops or child and what is it called? Is it child security or social security or whatever? Have you ever called them for your parents? Please answer in the comment section because uh, Nigerians, I don't think any Nigerian can relate to this question. That any Nigerian living in Nigeria, I don't think anybody has called parents, called police for their parents. Um, did you ever want to run away? You know this thing where after they beat you, you and your siblings. Me, this is me and my sister because me and my sister in that house, we are like this. We are the closest, you know, my body, body. We are the only, we are the, we are the house girls of the house. So you know, that's what we bond on. So after they beat us finish now, my sister will be crying. Ah, I can cry rubbish cry. Eh? Very very rubbish annoying cry. I'll be crying. Ah, then we'll be say, this is not our parents. Our oh, real mommy and daddy are coming. Ah, that's the one that I can relate to. <laughs> I've thought of running out from the house, but I've never because I feel like at that point, like no matter how small I was, I had the sense that if I leave this place, what am I going to eat? Where will I start from? Who will carry me? And then I come and kidnap me, I come and do, use me as a ritual uncle. So I think no matter how small I was, or how young I was, or how pained I was, I had the sense that, guy, don't be stupid. If you leave here, what are you going to do? What will you do to do? As small as you are, what, what do you know you can do? That kind of thing. So I can only imagine it in my head. But then the one I used to think, like, I, I seriously believed was that these are not my parents. Mm -mm. You can't tell me that you're beating me this way and you're expecting to believe that you're my parents. You don't find that suspicious. You don't find that suspicious. Find that suspicious. Mhm. Mm mm. Kill. Tell yourself that's on me. I don't look at people. They are not my parents. Ah, as soon as I thought, I would not be imagining the day I'll talk back to my parents. Ah, you cannot try it in my house. They will beat you. Ah, my mom will beat you. Even till now. I don't dare talk back to my parents. Even as I'm here. No, I won't beat you. Mm -mm. But that ran away now. I've never I I only believed that they were not my parents. They adopted me my own they don't adopt him, they pick me from Gotha. Not even adopt they pick me from Gotha dear. Because is that is adoption even it's in Nigeria. Like that what I used to think. Mm -hmm. So the next one did your parents compete uh, compare you with other people they did 
and that was one of the most toxic traits of my parents they compared us a lot ah, with our cousins don't you know your cousin damai or yamai your cousin will go to his father's car and read see you look at you just fat and full everywhere rubbish what are you doing see you smell like pig get out of my sight that's my mommy <laughs> literally that's my mom my dad compares us like in terms of academics like why you why you like why you why are you not studying like my daddy wants you to read even when it's holiday like what am i reading what what do i know they will teach you in the next class my mom will be like read ahead of your class my dad if he's comparing you it always has to do with academics like you're not reading your cousins are doing better than you your cousin gets scholarship here your cousin do this your cousin do that cousin that they are years older than me like their time is not my time like guy seriously like seriously then my mom will own my mom went different since so in market my mom will compare you see that girl she's helping her mother see you just sit down here Oh, I should be the one. So, so you follow me to the market. I should not be the one to come and carry the load. Mm? Look at you. And you think you have sense. Get out of my sight. That's my mom. My mom will compare you for everything. The smallest thing. You go to church. That person dressed past you. Say, you see you? Young girl like you, you don't have sense. You don't have to dress. Me, old man like me, I will teach you fashion. You see, you see how you, you see how you meet her dressing? Can you face like, like, like old mama? Mm, Mama and Becky, mm, you have come. Well done, no. Get out of my sight. Get out. And that's how I face with <laughs> My mom compares us with everybody for everything. But the one time my mom does that, you know, is to boost our ego. That time, maybe we are watching film and then the acting is dropping. I'll be like, if my queer go there or if my sugar go there, she'll do better than them. You know, like she hypes us in this funny way. She feels like if we do what we are doing we are better than everybody that kind of thing but then when she wants to compare you and put you down she will put you down in the below that's my mom for you then the other one did your parents ever follow you to school to do what who, who is your daddy <laughs> follow you to school to do what no i don't think my parents ever followed me to school whether it's to drop me or anything, no, because I, me personally, I schooled in the estate, so my parents have not followed me to school before, and I didn't, I didn't cause trouble in school. I wasn't a troublemaker, like I was a very calm kid, like, and plus my school, and you know the thing, my my our proprietress, like the owner of our school, we live we live directly opposite the lady, like, see our house, see the lady's house just like that like there's no space you just open our gates walk straight to the house. if i got in trouble if i got in trouble it's like generally my class got in trouble and it has to do with one teacher or the other but never maybe they maybe say maybe teacher beat you i won't follow you to school to can't hear what's happening whoa, whoa. did she send you daddy she did not send you she did not send you like the worst thing that will happen to you as a child in a gankon my gankon family is that you cause trouble in school and my mommy follow you to school. Ah. Ah. You will wish they suspend you. You will wish that teacher beats you. You will wish. Ah, mm -mm. it's bad because my mommy will do worse than the school can ever do. From that school, there, yeah, yeah, she will start beating you. She will not give the teachers more mind. So even if they beat me, excuse me, let me they beat me, tear my eye. Bah. Never, I will never tell my mother and see what happened. Mm. There was even one time where this mad woman, because this old lady is mad, where we were just three. You know this Ugo still go book that they say for junior wire prep, and the, the French part was a French teacher. So she told us that we should do, I don't, I forgot how many pages, that we should do the, we should write the answer in French. And this one don't teach us nothing. She don't, she don't teach us anything. So the point was that we were supposed to do the assignment, and the class, no, no nobody in the class did, like, complete the assignment because it was impossible. So she came and then she was like, because our school is like a three, a two-story building. So, you know, there's the ground floor, then two upstairs in here, whatever. So she was like, and we were in the last floor. She was like, we should use our knee from the first floor to the last floor five times. So we crawled up, down and up, like from the first to the ground floor, like that. So plenty with their knee, here, oh, this one, that one. So people are crying, people are calling their mommy. Me, I'm just here like this. You know, 
Tell me that what? No one will beat me. Ha, no one will be, ha, no. No. My parents have never followed me to school. My parents followed me to school, maybe. No, they've never followed me to school. They, my, my mom have gone to my proprietor's house because something happened to school. One man down to my boy her daughters. Okay, so. And then they fired the man. Then the other question. Were you forced to come out and greet Visto? Is it even forced? No, if not that you are mad and you are stupid, why be somebody be Visto come to the house and you don't go and greet Visto? And be their video destiny to go and do abracadabra. Ha, they will kill you. No, you cannot even try. You cannot even dream of it. So they don't have to call you. Once you hear that there's a Visto, only you use your leg and come down. And then you know you do the frustration and everything. What's the dumbest thing you've ever been called for? My mom, come and change the channel for me. And the remote is in her hand. Literally. That's, that's the only thing. Quiet! Ma, come. Bye, bye. In our language, my language, bye. Bye, G. I'll come. Hey, come on, Shuka, you give it a, come on, change this channel for me. When I say, no, 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 don't, don't put that one, don't put that one, wait. Oh, no, my mom, my mom, she'll call you, so you come and teach her, she'll say, no. I see, it's weird, you're, like, you're dragging sweet, like me, baby. Don't, don't touch your mouth, wait, wait. Uh -huh. Put it for me here. Bring your head now, put it. Ah, that thing is, that is annoying. Like, just let me change this thing for you and go back to what I'm doing. I was trying to show her, she wanted to do as if she knew. But you called me here to teach you, like, so, so, what, what am I even doing here, first of all? Like, is it this one? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, she should not press the wrong thing. She should not say, hey, I'm doing that. I say, no, mommy. She don't yell. And mommy, my mommy is, all of a she behaves like a child. Like, she's a drama queen. My mommy, is, uh, my mom. <laughs> She's frustrating, I beg. I mean, it's frustrating. Ah. My daddy owns. is, he will give you work. So my dad will say, go and clean, maybe go and wash the plates. You're washing the plates. He maybe now go to the front or the backyard and see that maybe there's one death somewhere. Who not call you? Quiet. So this thing that I see, who will clean it? That will clean it. Come and clean it now. You know, you know, you want to tell him that you're washing plate that he told you to wash. He said, No, come and clean this one now. And you clean that one and he now go and say, It's okay, not finish this plate. So, how how do you expect me to wash plate and sweep at the same time? If you're not just trying to frustrate my life, like, how? Anyways, so the next one Were you allowed to eat outside? I wear. Oh, that eye that. Try it, ha! Huh. You bastard! Try it and see what I will do to you. I. That's my mommy. Oh, just look at you. And it's, ah, I, I'm sure all African, all my drama like that. Just be smiling. Eh, you know it. 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 It's let me deal with you. So that's how my mom is. Looks better. So, um, were you forced to go to church? I was not forced to go. I was glad when they said let us go to the house of the Lord because that is my only escape from that house. I was glad to see church program call me. Is it the thing is you don't have to come and I have to call everybody in church to come and beg my parents, especially my daddy, to let us go out, like go for church program. Especially, especially if those ones, maybe all this youth camp. Or GA camp, I don't know if anybody is Baptist in Nigeria, or this GA camp, or youth camp, or like that camp. You have to, they have to, I have to call our pastor's wife, our youth president, our choir um, director, all of them, they have to come and beg my daddy or my mommy to let us go out to church. Oh, church. My dad only is, no, the road is, the road is dangerous. My mommy, she don't want you to go anywhere. Come on, follow me to church, to shop. That's my mommy. My mommy don't, like, you like one loss. You don't know, you don't know road. As big as I don't know road. Get out. That's my mommy. My daddy, he'll be like, my daddy is scared. The road is 
this the road is not safe, the road is this one, the road is that one. But me, church, yes, so I'm the first first person. Please just call me, let me leave this place. Then midnight prayers. My mommy, midnight prayers. The one that are not <laughs> no, that one is not annoying, it's actually funny. Whether well, now and then it's actually funny. We know that where only how on our own way is praying the rush, not going and say, Oh yeah. Jesus name, amen. That one is funny, but I know that it's annoying. It's when you leave your prayers that you're praying on your own. You now call everybody in the house that we should come and pray down. I mean, in the parlor that we should come out and pray. I hate that. I hate that thing. Okay, it's not rubbish because it's it's actually helpful, but I hate I hate that thing because throughout the day we are busy going to shop, doing work or school or wanting one thing. This one and I will have to sleep. We now come and do prayers. We now have to wake up again by 6 a.m. to do family devotion. Before you know, we are going to shop again by 7 a.m. We we'll come back by 7 p. It's, it's what we do. Anyways, what is the most embarrassing thing your parents ever did to you in public? I can't think of anyone now. But my mom is always doing the most. That's why I try my best not argue with my mom in public. If not, I'll be embarrassed. She, she's not. My mom said, "You think you're embarrassing me? You think you're doing myself? You, you think you're doing me? You're doing yourself." You embar- you, if you want to embarrass me, I'll embar- I will disgrace you. That's my mom here. So I don't think I ever argued my mom. Maybe I have, and I got beat up. Like there's no two ways about that. That's the only way that thing could have ended. I will get beat up. There's no two ways about it. Did you guys ever talk about boys or dating? Uh, were they cool with having boyfriend and girlfriend? Eh? So, quiet. You are not a big girl, Abby. You're talking about boy. You, you open your mouth, boy. Is it called a dirty mouth? What do you know? But my mom talked about boys in the sense that this sex education thing, my mom didn't shy us away from it. Like, right from when, from when I was, from as, like, since i was young since i was small as early as three four if not even two so my mom have been telling us even in front of my, my dad i'll be like if he touch you if my brother touch you come and tell me i'll cut it off that kind of thing so my mom is my mom was very sensitive and very active about like in the sex education part but in the sense of you coming carrying boy that you want to date like i are you are you mad like what possessed like my mom is so strict that you can't even bring friends to the house you can't go out to birthday party who is you who, who, who are, are you are you mad you can't go out you can't like even if it's a female friend nobody's coming to her house you're not going to anybody's house that's my mom i will always be like what what do you need friends for i'm i'm like ma see are you, are you being serious like i need friends for a lot of things like i can't i can't live alone that kind of thing i can't be an island of myself but that's your own story i'm talking to my mom like that too you did not know so my mom talked about boys like be wary of boys my mom will not say if you touch boy you get pregnant too but you know if if she would tell like if they put it in hey put it in hey my mom was that open about like the sex education and all of that my mom talked about boys but not in the sense of you want to have a boyfriend in my mommy's house are you mad but right now my mom is like if we want to marry tomorrow she'll be happy because she wants us to get married i'm like never never i'm not getting married like not anytime soon so that was it so basically i, I the questions are done that was fast the questions are done but the roundup of everything is that i would say my situation this is even like a tiny fraction of what i went through growing up as a girl in my house in a, in a, in a typical nigerian house i feel like my house is a typical nigerian house so i would say uh, one of like out of 10 my experience was like 10 being the worst my experience was like Eight over ten, or nine over ten, because I didn't you know some people that go through a lot. You know, though you see permanent scars on their body. I didn't have none of that. So I would say my parents were very strict, but they were not devilish. 
and they were not like straight up wicked like straight from pit of hell wicked no they were not that but they were strict and right now i feel like i appreciate the like the environment i grew up in or the kind of parent i grew up with because looking at myself the way i am like this if i didn't have that tight or tough upbringing i can already picture the kind of person i'll be i won't be like straight up stupid or like loose and wild and crazy but you know I would, have been, I would have been different from how I am right now and I am I really appreciate the home training I, I wouldn't say it's traumatized me in any way or maybe I just haven't realized that I've been traumatized no I, 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 would, I would say I don't have any trauma from like my childhood because of like the beating and all of that stuff or the punishment or the strictness but the only thing I'll say like had a bad effect on me is the fact that they were always deciding for me so like right now I grew up to be, very, to be a very indecisive person. Like I don't know what I want. Like seriously, if they had left me to pick my career, if they had left me to pick what I want to study, I have no idea what I want to do with my life. So like when they were choosing our university, for, I was just happy that they were choosing because if they had left me, I don't know what I want to do with my life. So I think that's the only thing that that they did that had a bad effect on me. Like literally, they decide every single thing. Like even down to the fact that when I want to dress for church, I got my mom should I wear because I don't know for myself what I want. Like it was that bad and it is still that bad. Like recently, like coming to Cyprus has helped me a bit. Like I'm more I'm like a lot different from how I was before, but I'm still very indecisive. And that's the only thing I think I had, that's the only bad thing that I feel like my upbringing. That's the only bad effect it had on me because I couldn't decide for myself. Say queer to go here, queer to go there. I I don't I'm not even ask you why I'm going there. Like it was literally that way. I don't I don't argue. Go and do this. Yes. Come here. Yes. Go there. Yes. Like it's sad. It's sad that I'm the way I'm as that I'm as indecisive as I am right now. But aside that, I'll say it's for it was fun. You know, thinking back back to it now the, the only person that i would, that would say is not for my sister because she she had it bad like she had it bad i i feel for her i how, how she didn't lose her mind is is a wonder to me because i would have lost it yeah so that's why she's my baby now i take care of her like a baby <laughs> anyway i'm going to annoy it wishes to cry at time huh. sometimes I, I feel like it's not worth crying because you know these people should be crying She'll be doing ah but then she's a tough one among me and uh, like between us she's a tougher one because she's the one that can stand up to them and be like yeah i'm i'm not doing this or this is not going down well with me and stuff like that but me i'm just you know, like that anyways you guys oh my this is tight too wait first huh Anyway, you guys, this has brought us to the end of this video, and I know, I know, I said I wasn't going to talk much. I know I, was, I said it was going to be a short video, but I'm sorry. This is the reality of watching my channel. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching this video till the end. Please don't forget to like this video, give this video a thumbs up. It was interesting, wasn't it? I know it was. Don't lie to my face look me in the eye anyways give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed turn on your post notifications so you get notified every time i upload a new video and don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section down below what do you think of the video how was your childhood like growing up in a nigerian home or in an african home and even if you're not in nigeria or in, or in your african country of origin wherever you grew up in what it was like having african or nigerian parents and yeah what do you think of my own experience because i know my own experience was a lot a lot like a lot yeah so um and that will be it for this video i'll see you guys in my next video thank you guys and please like subscribe comment and share with your friends let's get to 500 subscribers guys thank you for the most that you've been doing thus far and I'll see you in my next video.